Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 956. I have the black pieces and my opponent. Started off with e4. I went with d5, the Scandinavian defense. So he took, that's the main move. And I played knight f6. You can see that's the second choice here. Queen takes d5 is also a fine way to play, but I've just uh, learned to play this way. And I kind of like it. I mean, it, it always seemed more logical to me to try and develop my knight and not put my queen out where it can get kicked around. But uh, anyway, that, that queen takes d5 is quite playable too. And here he went knight c3. You can see that's the, the third choice here. I think, um, you know, any of these moves are uh, good for white. Maybe knight c3 is uh, it's not the strongest move here. Um, you know, I played d4 myself. Um, there's this interesting move here that Chess Explained recommends, uh, bishop b5 check. Uh, What's cute about this is you block with the bishop here, the bishop drops back, and you uh, reposition the bishop here. So both bishops uh, move twice, but the bishop on um, d7 is just blocking blocking black's development. He needs to use that square for a knight. So, so it doesn't matter that black moved his bishop twice because white moved his bishop twice too, and it all works out. Um, let's see. Or another idea here is instead of uh, playing bishop c4, which is kind of the most logical move, uh, he could also play his bishop back to uh, e2, that would stop me from playing bishop g4. And then the line continues, uh, let's see, knight takes d4 and bishop to f5. So once again, uh, both sides have moved their bishops twice early in the opening, so uh, that sort of cancels out and uh, seems like a, a normal position to me. Um, but Chess Explained likes this for White. White has more space in the center, so I guess uh, he's right. This leads to some kind of uh, edge for White. Anyway, let's go back to the game. Here he played um, Knight c3. Uh, let's see, the only move, yeah, the only move I think here that's not particularly good is c4, because c4 allows me to play c6, and this is a good gambit if, uh, if White takes. Uh, pawn takes, Knight takes, and so... Uh, White gets to keep the extra pawn, but he has holes on the dark squares in the center, and uh, that, that's good for uh, black in my experience. There are other ways to play that. He could, uh, after c4, c6, he could also play d4. So that's, that's c4, c6, then d4, um, and just allow me to take the pawn back, and that actually transposes into the Panov Botvinnik attack against the Karo Khan, of all things. Um, and that's okay for white, but um, it's not anything black should be afraid of either. Anyway, he went knight c3. I think this is pretty easy for black to play. And in fact, uh, when he continues to exchange like this, um, he should probably just uh, develop. He, he just uh, was intent on exchanging in the early part of the game, and I think that uh, gave black an easy game and in fact led to an advantage for black. So here he should avoid the trades and uh, keep developing with a move like bishop to c4. But he took, and each of these exchanges is pulling one of my pieces forward. And now he played queen f3, offering yet another exchange. And once again, this is uh, the way I played it. I defended with the bishop so that the exchange would pull another one of my pieces forward. Notice that I don't want to take uh, his queen because that would help white develop. Um, another idea here, which I thought about, is queen c5. You can see that was actually in the opening book, but there's no continuation of the line after that. I did look at this with the chess engine and it recommended <laughs> bringing the queen over to b3 to defend. So we have this uh, funny position where queens are dancing about in the middle of the board. Should be okay for black. Um, it's probably, uh, well, uh, it, it liked, uh, the chess engine liked the move I played, uh, bishop e6. There's also apparently the move e6 with a similar idea, defend the queen and, uh, and if he takes you get a pawn on uh, d5, so it gives black a little more center control and, uh, and a, a one-move edge in development if, uh, if white responds with d4. So, so it's like uh, <clears throat> the positions have been reversed and white has, uh, black has the move instead of white. Anyway, um, bishop b6, like I said, was fine. And once again, I don't think, well, we're out of the book, so we can look at this page. I don't think he should take. I think he should keep the queens on in some way because uh, this just helps me. Um, and now he has to play some move to continue his development. Um, he played f3. I mean, I guess he was worried about how he's going to develop his uh, light squared bishop. Uh, the chess engine here would, 
ignore that problem for a while. Just put it off till later. Play with d3, so allow me to play e5, grab a stake in the center. Knight e2. Uh, let's see, I would go knight c6, and then bishop e3. So you can see that um, white is set up to uh, castle queenside. And now if I choose to uh, castle kingside later after developing my bishop, um, then he has other ways to deal with the problem on, of the pawn on g2. He could uh, maybe play the rip to g1, for example, push the pawn forward two squares and try and go for an attack against my king. It's just, uh, I think, it's a little more flexible way to play, I think, than f3. But there's nothing particularly wrong with f3. It does solve some of white's development's problems. Let's see, I go with e5. And in, in all these lines, white or black, black ends up with a slight edge with a little more center control and a slight lead in development. Let's see, he goes bishop b5 check. I kick it back with the c-pawn, drops back. Let's see, I develop. So we get some normal developing moves. I think this part is pretty straightforward. We both castle and uh, nobody's really making any mistakes through here. Goes b3. Um, he's going to develop his bishop on this diagonal since uh, his bishop has blocked, his other bishop has blocked the uh, the uh, uh, deep on there, so the bishop has to come out that way. So I played knight c5, trying to harass his uh, bishop here, and he goes bishop f5, and I continue with g6. So this plan of harassing the bishop, maybe it's good. Maybe I could have found another plan. I, I kind of wonder about it in retrospect. The bishop sits over here at h3 and maybe could come back into the game via g2 if he pushes a g-pawn forward. Um, and right here, this next move is a minor mistake. So I think this is maybe my first uh, inaccuracy in the game or mistake, depending on how you how you count these things. Um, probably I should have gone ahead and played f5 and uh, complete complete the shutting down of the bishop. And then if he plays knight c3, hitting my bishop, I could drop it back to f7. And uh, and so I get the kind of position I was looking for where his his bishop has been shut out. I have good center control with these pawns. And, uh, and then I can bring my rook or over to uh, one of these files in the center. Let's see. But I brought, in this position, I brought my rook over immediately. And uh, so that guy gave him the chance to play knight c3 now at a time when this bishop only has uh, one square it can go to. Now, uh, in this position, the chess engine actually likes to move f5. So I think the idea here is that um, if black takes the pawn, you take back with the uh, c-pawn, takes the bishop, you take back with the c-pawn, and you've got a really imposing uh, pawn front here. But um, this kind of position is actually a little bit tricky to play, especially for someone at my level, because in the long run, white does have the bishop pair. And so all white has to do is kind of undermine that center and open up some lines, and he will be equal or maybe even slightly better. So uh, so I'm, I'm reluctant to play that way, even though the chess engine uh, thinks that's the best way to play here. So, um, yeah, I just dropped my bishop back and uh, he traded it off. So it solved his problem with this uh, bishop that was not really participating in the game or about to be shut out of the game. Um, and so this is probably about equal at this point. Let's see, he goes bishop to b2, you go f5, he goes d3. Well, the chess engine at various times still gives a slight edge to black. And now here I was trying to figure out how to get my knight into the game. I mean, it looks like a good post there, but it's really uh, looking at a bunch of squares that are under white's control. So um, so I ended up playing this funny move, rook to e7, but it was just to uh, give this knight a, a square to go to, put him on a circuit like this, where he could come into either um, f4 or um, e4, depending, uh, d4 rather, either f4 or d4, depending on how things go. Let's see. Um, so after rook e7, uh, white played h3. That's kind of a funny move. Uh, the chess engine actually would play g3 here. I guess, you know, he's trying to uh, reduce the number of targets on this diagonal, but, but playing h3 and, uh, and creating holes on that diagonal seems like, seems like a, some kind of positional mistake there, but not a huge deal. Anyway, I continue with my plan of bringing my uh, knight around. And now he decides to push on with h4. Also a bit funny, he could have gone to h4 in one move. Maybe that was a bit of a, a misclick or maybe he changed his mind. Anyway, um, 
I continue with knight d4, getting my knight to a good central location. Um, let's see, he played rook a to c1, defending defending the c2 pawn there. I go bishop to b4, setting up a tactic. And uh, you, you can question this line of play, actually. Uh, there may have been other moves. I think uh, just doubling here is, is something to consider, uh, be kind of the normal move. Um, when you play for a tactic like this, uh, you know, it's, it's very tempting at this level because uh, as we saw in the game, it often pays off. But uh, well, you have to ask yourself, is this move really helping your position? I think in a, in a, uh, a slow game where you can expect your opponent to, to see all the tactical tricks, uh, maybe that's not the best move in the position. But uh, particularly in blitz, uh, you know, it's, it's often tempting to go for these tactics. So you know, as long as it doesn't uh, make my position worse, which I don't think it does. I think uh, there's nothing especially wrong with this move. Um, it's just that maybe I had better moves if he just uh, responds normally. Actually, it, it's, it wasn't uh, too easy to defend against this. The, um, the only moves that work are king moves. Um, and maybe king f2 is the best of the king moves because that prevents the fork altogether by controlling that square. And then... Um, the play might continue like this, rook to e8, uh, doubling on the e-file there, a3 kicking my bishop, h5, trying to weaken my king side a bit, and uh, you know this was a chess engine line, it wants to reposition the knight now, it's not uh, doing much. Once again, it's looking at squares that uh, white has under control. Let's see, black can exchange there, king can go forward and the knight can come into uh, f4 poking at the uh, G pawn. And um, Chess Engine gives a slight edge to black here, but uh, the game would continue. It looks like uh, black has pretty good pieces. The bishop is on a good diagonal, uh, has a couple of good diagonals it could go to, and uh, it might drop back to check the king, drive it, drive it back. Um, so these are all ideas that black has in the position, so it's a pretty reasonable position for black. But uh, anyway, after bishop b4, he overlooked the tactic and he played a3. And so now this is, um, this is uh, the kind of tactic you should always be aware of. <laughs> it, uh, it happens quite a bit. Whenever you see a knight that is uh, participating in a potential fork, um, you know, this is actually a three-way fork, but this can happen with uh, two-way forks as well. Imagine the king wasn't here and the knight was just going to come in here and it's forking the rook and the other knight. So that's a useless fork because the knight will just take the knight, right? But if you can trade off the knight, then suddenly that becomes a useful fork. So that's an idea, especially if uh, trading off the knight brings a piece forward. So now the, uh, the fork is hitting both the rook and the bishop, as well as the king in this case. So this just wins a whole piece. But uh, anyway, it's a, a useful tactical idea you should always keep an eye out for in your games. Anyway, he resigned at this point, and um, that's it. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Bye now.